हेलो एवरी वन वेलकम बैक टू द चैनल सो लेट्स गेट ऑन टू सॉल्व इन प्रिलिम्स क्वेश्चन फॉर प्रिलिम्स ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी एंड क्वेश्चन नंबर वन कंसिडर द फॉलोइंग स्टेटमेंट्स अबाउट क्वेश्चन आर नंबर वन क्वेश्चन आर इज यूजली द फर्स्ट आर ऑफ द सिटिंग ऑफ द लोकसभा सेकेंड लाइक जीरो आर इट इज नॉट मैंशन इन द रूल्स ऑफ प्रोसीजर एंड कंडक्ट ऑफ बिजनेस और राइट स्टेटमेंट नंबर थ्री इज नो क्वेश्चन कैन बी आस्ड टू अ प्राइवेट मेंबर इन द हाउस ऑल राइट लास्ट इज स्पीकर कैन नॉट डिस अलाउ अ क्वेश्चन इन द क्वेश्चन आर सो इट्स अ लिटल डिफिकल्ट क्वेश्चन आई वुड से बट विद अ लिटल कॉमन सेंस दिस कैन बी सॉल्व बट लेट्स सी द ऑप्शन नाउ सो वी आर टू फाइंड द करेक्ट स्टेटमेंट हियर एंड द ऑप्शन आर वन टू एंड थ्री ओनली वन ओनली वन एंड थ्री ओनली थ्री एंड फोर ओनली सो पॉज अ बिट एंड डू ट्राई टू कम अप विद द राइट आंसर बिकॉज इट्स ऑफ पॉलिटी एंड एज आई ऑलवेज से पॉलिटी इज अ वेरी हाई इल्डिंग एंड वी शुड बी मार्किंग इट रॉन्ग सो लेट्स ईद वे गेट ऑन टू द एक्सप्लेनेशन पार्ट राइट नाउ सो बेसिकली सपोज वी डू नॉट नो द आंसर टू द क्वेश्चन इफ वी नो दैन वेल एंड गुड बट वट इफ यू डोंट नो सो लेट्स रीड द स्टेटमेंट नंबर फोर इट सेज स्पीकर कैन नॉट डिस अलाउ अ क्वेश्चन इन द क्वेश्चन आर now speaker is the presiding officer of the house so how could he or she be not having the power to disallow a certain question right it's his job to decide on what all are the questions that can be discussed what all are the matters that can be taken up in the house right so statement 4 is definitely seeming unreasonable to us so that's how we can safely assume that statement number 4 is wrong so that's how d option is gone now let's look at the statement number 3 it says no question can be asked to a private member in the house so what is or who is a private member basically any legislator who is not a minister is a private member of the house so is it really is it reasonable to assume that no question can be asked to a private member what if the bill in question has been introduced by a private member so obviously the question would be asked to the private members right so this is how we can safely assume that statement number 3 is also incorrect so that's how option number a is also gone and option number c is also gone now even if we do not know the statement number first and second still we have gotten our answer that is b that's it it's the b i mistakenly highlighted a so right now answer is b so let's either way get on to statement number 1 and 2 statement number 1 states states question r is usually the first r of the sitting of the lok sabha absolutely correct we just have to memorize it whenever house sits for its day's business then first r is usually the question r this is what statement is and we just need to mug it up All right. Statement number second is incorrect because it is saying, like zero R, it is not mentioned in the rules of procedure and conduct of business. This is incorrect because question R is indeed mentioned in the rules of procedure as well as in the conduct of business. So we just have to memorize this that yes, question R is the first R of the sitting of the Lok Sabha in normal circumstances unless otherwise provided by the speaker. That's why the word usually here and it is definitely mentioned in the rules of procedure and conduct of business. So that's how we have solved question number 1. Do go through it once again if there is any confusion left. so let's get on to explanation part i have already done <clears throat> so let's get on to the next question which is quite simple so the question is the term political party finds a mention under which of the following schedule of the constitution third schedule seventh schedule tenth schedule or eleventh schedule all right so question can be asked like this as well as if is political party finds mention in the constitution or not so definitely it does find a mention but right now the question is in which schedule is it having the mention so <clears throat> third seventh tenth or eleventh what is the right answer pause a bit try to come up with the right answer and let's see the answer now so answer here is tenth schedule it's right here c tenth schedule which deals with the anti defection law and it was not there in the original constitution so in the original constitution nowhere the term political party was mentioned but as per 52nd constitutional amendment which was carried out by the government of india in which year please let me know in the comment section 
and by the 52nd constitutional amendment the 10th schedule was introduced was incorporated and that's where we find a mention of the political party so that's it now talking about anti defection law would be a lot of deviations deviation so let's not deviate let's get on to statement number question number 3 which again is interesting and simple so which of the following statements best describe the term reflation all right number 1 it refers to an act of stimulus to increase spending in an economy all right two is it refers to a situation where retail prices of goods increase much faster than the services all right c is it is an act of increasing interest rates by monetary authority to curb high inflation all right and the last is it refers to a decline in retail prices of food grains as a result of government intervention all right so all the four statements were little difficult so just try to come up with the right answer it's really simple so let's look at the answer right now so basically it's a very very simple all we have to describe about is what is reflation so this is simple it refers to an act of a stimulus to increase spending in an economy that's it so we have to pump in the inflation that's what we basically mean by reflation so how we can do it we can do it by stimulating the <coughs> spendings in an economy and this is what basically reflation is abhi economy mein spending ko stimulate kaise karna hai this is where we need to look at the explanation part so basically it's a monetary tool or a fiscal tool so real inflation is basically about stimulating the spending in the economy so that we can have more and more output and that's how we can be having more and more economic activity in the economy and more and more employment so that's it abhi usko karna kaise hai although it's not needed question was simply about what is reflation but let's just cover it either way so how can we do the reflation thing we are to expand the output so either government can do it or the monetary authority basically the reserve bank of india can do it so reserve bank have these tools so basically reserve bank can change the money supply what all the money is to be supplied into the economy this is something decided by the reserve bank of india so money supply agar economy badhega to people would be having more money with them this is point number 1 and second of all agar money ka supply zyada hai to कर्जा लेना क्रेडिट लेना आसान रहेगा तो अगर क्रेडिट लेना आसान रहेगा तो इन्वेस्टमेंट बढ़ेगा दिस इज हाउ इधर वे एक्सपेंशन वुड बी देयर एंड व्हाट अदर थिंग्स दैट कैन बी डन रिडक्शन इन द टैक्सेस इफ वी आर सपोज टू पे लोअर रेट ऑफ टैक्स टू द गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया देन वी वुड बी हैविंग मोर मनी विद अस एंड दैट वी कैन यूज इन टू बाइंग गुड्स एंड सर्विसेज एंड दैट्स हाउ विल बी बूस्टिंग द इकॉनमी राइट एंड सेकेंड ऑफ ऑल लोअरिंग द इंटरेस्ट रेट्स नो हेयर इन अगेन central bank would come into picture we know rbi normally does this thing and i do not think we should be even th discussing about it so yes lowering interest rate is there that's how the, it would be easier on part of businessman to borrow money and investment demand in the economy would go up so basically all these measures are to boost the economy to stimulate the spending so reducing the taxes lowering the interest rates changing the money supply and the last is capital projects now here in गवर्नमेंट कुछ भी अच्छा सा बिजनेस वेंचर चला सकती है एनी थिंग दैट गना जनरेट जॉब्स दैट्स गना क्रिएट जॉब्स एंड दैट्स गना बूस्ट एम्प्लॉयमेंट बिकॉज एम्प्लॉयमेंट होगा तो लोगों के पास पैसा आएगा पीपल वुड बी पेड बाय गवर्नमेंट राइट सो दैट्स इट आई थिंक दिस इज इनफ बट देर इज फ्यू थिंग्स रिटर्न ओवर हेयर लेट्स रीड दैम नाउ रिफ्लेशन इज अ फिजिकल और मोनेटरी पॉलिसी डिजाइन टू एक्सपैंड आउटपुट स्टिमुलेट स्पेंडिंग एंड कर्ब द इफेक्ट्स ऑफ डिफ्लेशन विच नॉर्मली अकर्स आफ्टर अ पीरियड ऑफ इकोनॉमिक अनसर्टेंटी और ए रिसेशन रिफ्लेशन एम्स टू स्टॉप डिफ्लेशन एंड वॉट इज डिफ्लेशन द जनरल डिक्लाइन इन प्राइसिस फॉर गुड्स एंड सर्विसेज That occurs when inflation falls below zero percent. अब इतना ज़्यादा कुछ मुश्किल नहीं है. Deflation is simply the general decline in prices for goods. कोई चीज़ पहले सौ रुपए की थी, तो अभी वो ninety five की हो गई है. So this is deflation. और deflation से लड़ने के लिए हमें 
रिफ्लेशन चाहिए वी हैव टू स्टिमुलेट द स्पेंडिंग वी हैव टू गिव मनी टू द पीपल बेसिकली सो दैट पीपल वुड बी डिमांडिंग गुड्स एंड सर्विसेज एंड दैट्स हाउ अगैन द प्राइसिस ऑफ गुड्स एंड सर्विसेज वुड गो अप दैट हैड फॉलन बिकॉज ऑफ डिफ्लेशन राइट सो दिस इज इनफ इट वॉज रियली रियली सिंपल बट लॉट ऑफ अदर क्वेश्चन कैन बी फ्रेम्ड फ्रॉम दिस वेरी टॉपिक एंड दैट वॉज अ रीजन वी spend so much time into the explanation so let's look at the last question now which again is simple consider the following statements regarding local area banks upsc asked us about the chronology four five things were given and local area bank two was there to ab ye kaun se saal mein establish hua iska zarurat hai yaad rakhne ka but let's just not deviate and look at this question now so consider the following statements regarding local area bank number 1 they are established to provide efficient and competitive financial intermediation services in rural and semi urban areas all right second is they are regulated by state governments which of the statements given ab- above is are correct so i mistakenly showed the answer but i think doesn't really matter statement one only two only both only or neither so pause a bit and try to come up with the right answer it's really important so let's look at the answer now here in local area bank were basically established in the year 1996 because either way there were lot of banks in the urban areas and in rural areas we were not having enough for financial inclusion so to curb this gap government came up with the idea of local area bank that was to cater to a very small area because either way rural area is a small area and we can think of semi urban areas also as a rural area right so yes this is indeed correct that local area bank is to deal with the rural and semi urban area when was it introduced 1996 very very important udhar question solve karne ke liye chronology ka year iska yaad rakhna zaruri tha so we know it that's what matter and second of all they were expected to bridge the gaps in credit availability in the rural area and the semi urban areas to jo gap hai urban aur rural ya semi urban areas mein usko isne bridge karna tha now this is important right now the minimum capital requirement to open a local area bank is 25 crore that's it and earlier it was 5 crore but pehle kya tha wo zaruri nahi hai abhi wala yaad rakhna hai now this is important that RBI has permitted the local areas bank to be converted into small finance bank if they are into meeting certain eligibility criteria this is either way simple ab ek bank hai jo sirf cater karta hai rural and semi urban area ko to usko aur viability ke liye wo chahega ki pura bank ban jaye as in small finance bank so ban sakta hai provided RBI ka guidelines aur eligibility criteria the bank is being able to met to meet okay so the regulatory and supervisory responsibility over the labs lies with the rbi and this is important koi state government ka control nahi hai rbi isko regulate karega statement was just to confuse us so the regulatory and supervisory responsibilities over the local area bank lies with the reserve bank of india and they are subjected to prudential norms accounting policies and other policies laid down by the reserve bank of india that's it it is just that it is to cater to the needs of a rural and semi urban area otherwise it is like a normal bank that is subjected to all the regulations of the reserve bank of india be it your prudential norms any accounting policy or any other policies laid down by the rbi so that's it so we are done with the last question as well and that's how we can say only statement number 1 is correct so that's it we are done if you haven't gotten over any of the question then do let me know in the comment section we'll go through that thing again so thank you so much for watching and goodbye